warning, some viewers may find this content disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. from Bigfoot's Barber Shop. Yes, this is excellent to see you here in the Fox Den tonight. We are ready for another episode of Midnight Lycanthropy here in the Fox Den. Yet please allow me to feed. Much better, revamped, recharged, and ready to rumble. <laughs> Without further ado, it is now time for Brian and myself to take a walk into the darkness. My creatures of the night, yes. Welcome back to another episode of Star Fox Radio and Midnight Lycanthropy here in the Fox Den. We have an amazing host slash guest tonight who is a good friend of mine as well of the North American Dogman Project. And he does a ton of his own paranormal research. Mr. Brian Barber, how goes it tonight, my friend? We're doing good, Kenny. How are we doing? Not too bad. I've been pretty busy as well, and glad you're doing well. Just trying to piece together this puzzle as to what's occurring. So anything new your way? Well, actually, we're starting to uh, put together a little YouTube channel called Bigfoot's Barbershop. And so we're going to get into the Bigfoot stuff, but as well as I w- I'd like to discuss other cryptids as well, because Dogman sightings are on the rise up here. Dogman, as much as I really, you know, don't want to run into one, but I want to know what's out there. So I want to start deep diving that topic as well. So it's a privilege to be on here and be able to kind of pick your brain, too, as we go. Very kind words. And it sounds like you've been up to some pretty good stuff. And I do like that name. So we will get you a rock and logo here pretty soon for sure. Yeah, there's definitely a ton of interesting things that are occurring throughout the globe and not just here in the united states but over here at the north american dogman project and myself we've been really diving into a lot of research of potential prehistoric animals that really do fit into a lot of the criteria and existing animals and yeah there's just a ton of stuff going on for sure and to my audience that doesn't know brian's family had a gnarly encounter where it was straight up some nightmare fuel and i do encourage anyone that hasn't had a chance to listen to that it is in some of my previous videos but luckily for everybody we have brian here tonight so he can kind of reiterate what actually occurred that night to update everybody if you would like to touch base on that for a bit oh definitely it sparked everything that encounter sparked what we're doing today and was one of the first ones before even you know dogman really became a term because it was in 1964 and it was down in manistee national forest in nuego and i believe that's close to where the joe barger incident happened you know much later obviously in the years but in 1964 the family was sitting around after dinner it was fairly dark out a foggy night and 
they had all of a sudden their German Shepherd started barking out in the yard. So within a few seconds of that happening, they heard the dog yipe. And then through the big picture window, the German Shepherd was thrown through the window with the chain wrapped around its neck. And so everybody jumps. My grandpa turns around and he was a decorated World War II vet, so he was pretty calm under pressure. But they pushed the bookcase in front of the hole in the window. And while they were doing that, something started jiggling the doorknob, trying to get in the door and banging on the door. When that quit, uh, my grandpa grabbed his gun. He had four sons at the time and they went outside in the fog. You couldn't see a whole lot. And he didn't want to get ambushed, so he had several of those World War II flashlights. Remember the big canister ones with the you know nine volt battery that looked like it came out of a car or something. <laughs> yes. And they climbed the ladder up on the roof, so they knew what was around them at that point. So they got up on the roof and they used those flashlights, and they could hear something breaking sticks and growling a little bit. And this goes on for quite a while until finally at one point they got a nice clear view of it in the fog. And it was a huge wolf sh- shape, but it was on two legs. But it had a, it, its mane was more like a lion than a wolf. And in the night it looked black, but it, it was such a fleeting glimpse they didn't take a shot at it. And But they said the next time they see it, they were gonna shoot it. And this goes on for a couple more hours while they're up on the roof. And just before dawn, whatever it was, uh, wandered off into the woods and they never did see it a second time to shoot it. Jeez, I'm curled that I straight so up. So I, I, I can't imagine sitting there at dinner and, you know, your 100 pound German Shepherd gets thrown through your window. The strength it would take to throw a dog that big, I mean, that, that blows my mind. And that was what. Yes. That happened in 64, and the ironic thing is they moved to Lake Ann in 1965, and all of a sudden the Bigfoot activity picked up on their property. So maybe they were kind of a magnet to something. Wow, that is straight-up nightmare fuel, my guy. Yeah, can you imagine? The youngest of the boys would have been five at the time. So sitting up there in a rough all night with your brothers and dad after seeing that, that is something else right there for sure that is just nightmare fuel now proceeding from there i guess where do you stand on some of your opinions or some of your thoughts as to what this really could be or have you ever had any interactions or experiences yourself or anyone you know kind of around your area that stand out to you or more or less there have been a couple sightings in benzie county that I heard of, and one was fairly recently, within the last couple of months, where they were going down, the name of it is Homestead Road, and it goes by the high school. They saw what they thought was a bear walking down the road, and then it, when the, they got closer, it stood up and turned, and they could see the dog face, and then it just jumped across the road and into the woods. So... There have been a couple other sightings. I don't remember the exact details on them, but the last time I went out actually bigfooting, I went down and they had the road blocked off and there was a guy standing at the edge and I asked what was going on. And they were actually filming a Dogman documentary. He wouldn't say for who. I said, is it a documentary or a movie? I mean, is this supposed to be based on the truth or is it a movie? And he's like, no, 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 it's a documentary. So... Between Benzie County and Manistee National Forest, there's been quite a bit of activity. Two years ago, as a matter of fact, a friend of mine was telling me that Dogman was kind of on a terror in those woods because the campers were being harassed. And, you know, one of the campers, their dog got. And when he went out to go Bigfooting, there was one of the two tracks that he goes down. The park rangers were up and they put a great big, you know, like a 10 miles, 10 foot cattle gates across the two track and then fence into the woods he didn't know how far it went but when he asked why he couldn't go down there they told him it was aggressive animal activity that's all they would say to him jeez um that's pretty sketchy right there too that's yeah all he would say is they wouldn't even say bear activity you know which would be with the first thing you would think of around here because there's bear everywhere um we've already had three in our park this year and we only had one the entire year last year so they're definitely out and about you know they don't normally 
put that big of a fence across. They normally just tell you to watch out for the bears, put your food in the tree and, and all that stuff. They don't quarantine the area. Exactly. 100%. Now that's very intriguing for sure. So proceeding from that, do you feel in your own research or basically your thought process, do you fall into the category as myself kind of where I believe there's definitely the physical versions of these. And I have heard obviously encounters where people have said that they shine lights at them and it almost looks like some sort of manifestation, which is way out of the realm of research of how I approach it. So I do believe that is also occurring too, but I feel like the majority of dogmen type activity that I've heard about seems to be a physical living animal. And I think a lot of people think just because something is dubbed the dog man and makes it canine based. And I've spoken about this over and over again about how baboons and hyenas are not canines, yet they can look like canines and et cetera. So how do you feel about that topic or where do you fall onto what side? I think we're pretty close there. Um, there's a type of Bigfoot called the Gugway, I believe. And it Very looks more like, like it. Yes. Yeah, more like a baboon. And, I, you know, I'm thinking maybe some of those could be mistaken for dogmen. I'm with you on that 100 percent. Yep. Proceed. So, you know, I fall into the physical part, but I don't slam the door on the metaphysical either. I think everything's open until we got a dogman that's willing to come out and say, hey, here we are. This is what we can do, what we can't do. <laughs> you yeah, know, until then, where do you draw that line in the sand? But I think I definitely think they're physical. And, you know, you start hearing the reports of where I know you're strictly dogman and I'm getting very new to the being a dogman, but, you know, more of a Bigfoot guy. But, you know, you start hearing reports and stories where they you know cross paths and it's quite a war when you hear some of these reports so i definitely think they fall into the physical ones because both sides are suffering casualties Mm -hmm. very well stated and i agree with that 100 percent too is that obviously nothing until it is presented in scientific form can be in any sort of quote-unquote spectacular relevance i mean it is theories and such but that does you know like you said make a lot of sense and if something exists in the physical form and is eating and drinking and running around opening doors etc if it's hit by a car or if it's shot anything that does breathe air or needs to live or has blood unfortunately can be destroyed or i guess depending in the situation maybe quote unquote fortunately <laughs> yes uh, but a lot depends of the, of the bullet you're on yes so that is very true but i think a lot of people are so set in their ways about things and they're afraid to step outside of the box and it really needs to be looked at like that though and when i do try to explain to people about how hey you know it's just a terminology dog man a bear is not a dog it will not give you dna that is canine based but it has a stout and ears and it came from a family of animals that was at one some point in time a split between canines and bears okay so again you're not going to get canine DNA from that, but it looks canine-ish. Uh, a baboon, like I said, hyena, dire wolves. A lot of people don't realize dire wolves aren't related to any sort of modern day wolves. You're not going to get canine DNA based back from that either. Saber-toothed tigers are not related to tigers or modern day cats. More or less, the moral of the story is that it's just a terminology. And I think people stick their nose up and laugh so much about it because of the terminology yet there is science to that i mean we find tracks that are unknown animals that look very similar to hyenas which a hyena track looks much like a bear's yet okay we do know at points in time hyenas did exist in north america and maybe people have areas where there's these hunting grounds where spotted hyenas have escaped who knows all i know is how did this track get here it's obviously here because there's something that is either a hyena curtain or ancient relative i mean there's so much in the past with just reports of people seeing 
animals that look hyena based. So that's why I really think that when it comes to science, I mean, there are ancestors and current species and species that really didn't that long ago that fall into categories as to a lot of things people are seeing. And I think that brings merit to the topic because we're talking about science here and now, and we're not just talking about creepy pastas and such. I mean, we're talking about things that we do know existed and some that still currently exist. We're talking about footprints that lead off into an area. We're talking about people seeing something that is quadrupedal and bipedal. Well, baboons are like that. And I stated before, they look like crazy werewolves with big manes and such. So, and there are some tracks that look potentially maybe baboonish that someone could have also thought was a bear or something else. I mean, they have some unique looking tracks too. So just in general, there is a lot in, to suggest that this or what people are seeing is physical based. Do you have any more, I guess, opinions or subject matters that kind of tie into that or a um, thought process that you would like to add to that? Well, you hit on something I didn't even think of in the fact that my first reaction would have been like you said, it looks like a canine, so it's got to be a canine, but that's not true. You know, as when you point that out, you're 100% right. So that's food for thought for me. I know the, I can't think of the name of the project now, but the one Dr. Melba Ketchum's working on, supposedly they've got dogman DNA now. I've heard about that. Yes. If you'd like to kind of dive into that a little bit. So I, I haven't heard too much. All I know is they got the DNA. They're not releasing it right now. And I don't know if it's because of a funding thing or what the deal is. You know, somebody said it's going to be hidden behind a paywall. Um, you know, Dr. Ketchum's friend of mine on Facebook, and I've talked to her several times about some of the Bigfoot stuff. But uh, I haven't I know she's really she hasn't responded to the last few times I tried. So I know she's really busy with this project. Plus, I'm, I'm sure whatever it is that they're working on is going to be done to perfection because of the heat she took over that genome project. And everybody thought the way the Bigfoot DNA came out was kind of sketchy. So I'm sure they're making sure that all the I's are dotted, the T's are crossed. It's going to be indisputable when when they do release it. Super interesting stuff right there for sure. That's cool. You've had a chance to interact with her. I am obviously not a DNA specialist. I am just a, a journalist and visual specialist. Yet I have spoken to some people that have pretty good knowledge on the topic of DNA. And I've also listened to other people that I didn't directly speak to, but just them talking. And DNA is hard meaning it's evolved in the last few years but just for example monster quest like 20 years ago right or whenever that was some of the dna that from back then just the advancements now that they're able to do like when i was talking to doug hijack the other day and he was just saying back then they couldn't really test things the way they wanted to necessarily now and also dna is very subjective in regards of what is the individual looking for i mean when they first start doing the dna test are they approaching it as more animal based or human based there's just so many like you said odds and ends i guess and i'm not a dna specialist so i don't know really how that all works but i do know that we would like to think dna is the perfect evidence but it also can be misguiding sometimes so what do you have you heard anything along the lines of that before and also one of the infamous ones is i do know jeff meldrum got sasquatch dna from a board that was like a plank board with screws on it with a remote cabin up in canada i encourage anyone to watch the episode on monster quests it's legendary but it came back with chimpanzee dna in it meaning who knows? Maybe it wasn't a Sasquatch that stepped on his porch, but either way, what is a chimpanzee doing in the wild in Canada? Right, on an island that's only accessible by a biplane. Yes, exactly. So what do you feel about all that? Fall into category with you there. I think DNA is amazing. They've come such a long ways. If they had the techniques they had now back then when they got that DNA, I think it probably would have came out different because now they have such a 
they need such a minute matter and able to replicate the sequence. But like you said, what's their intention when they start to test? Do you have somebody who's completely neutral, doesn't know what it is? Yes, so exactly. Test it, or is it somebody who's got an agenda to push? That's like, you know, I'm starting to be infamous for the little sweet and low box with what I think is Bigfoot poo in my freezer. Would love to get it tested, but it's like, okay, who do I trust with it? Who's going to say somebody's got their own agenda and like, nah, this is nothing. This is just better, even though it could be something different. That's such an excellent point as well right there, because just because something is being sent back as stating, hey, it's this, like you said, it really might not be. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm, I know personally that my friend and tracker of the North American Dogman Project, Nuxium, aka Brother Nature, he has had casts and things that he sent away. I mean, he has a ton of stuff now but he had some really nice ones that were sent away to some high up colleges and such and he never got them back and also jeff meldrum i'm pretty sure stopped sending casts in such a way too because i think some of the ones he originally had were never returned to him too so it makes sense yeah i mean you want to make sure like i know you know jody cook for example everything with us that he has people that obviously are trustworthy that he can you know refer things to but yeah you really definitely need to make sure who you're handing over things to i mean it's kind of off topic of the dog man but just in general i've just heard of things in the past of people coming in and just claiming they might be friends with another agency or officers or something and taking evidence etc so yeah it's definitely something that people need to be smart with how they approached it and also bottom line it's like you said if you have four or five different people that are all really smart with dna but one's neutral one thinks it's definitely bigfoot one thinks it might be dog man one person thinks it might be primate everyone's going to start the beginning part of the test a little bit different yeah they're all still working with dna but as you stated there's again i'm not a dna specialist but i just know there's it's very technical and there's just I don't want to use the word loopholes, but loopholes on, on how it can be deciphered, I guess. Well, yeah. And if you're from my generation, um, you know, loopholes came into big effect just during the O.J. Simpson trial. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, that's when the whole world kind of got exposed to DNA. Uh, you know, and then the Genome Project, um, you know, referring back to that as far as DNA, they sent that to, I think it was four different labs to try to confirm their findings. And, you know, some of the labs were like, this is a joke, or, or other ones were like, hey, where'd you get this? We really want to know. And then when they found out, they got really ticked off because they felt like they were being played. Mm -hmm. So I can imagine the same thing's going to happen with Dogman is, you know, science isn't really taking every, everything like this seriously. You know, Dr. Meldrum's the one who put Bigfoot on the map with science. Yes. So you know, now we need that same thing to happen with Dogman as somebody willing to give it a serious look. Because there's the same stuff out there for Dogman that there's Bigfoot. There's just not as much of it right now. I think there will be because, you know, Dogman is still kind of the taboo the way Bigfoot was, you know, 10 years ago. It just blows my mind that people will, oh, yeah, Bigfoot's real. We can do this. We can do that. You know, Bigfoot does this. Dogman, what? Oh, you're out of your mind. There's no Dogman. How can you? Yes to one and no to the other when technically neither one of them are supposed to exist. That's an excellent question, my friend. And you <laughs> hit the nail on the head with that because I scratched my head numerous times about that. And well, so when I try to deal with science in general, but we have a great team right now. We have an environmentalist. We have a master tracker. We have a geologist. We would like to bring on a couple of biologists or a zoologist. But when I approach people, I don't use the term necessarily dog man right off. I explain that I'm part of the North American dog man project. And we believe that in areas where people are going missing in the cave systems, that we have found some strange footprints as well as a ton of reports in regards to people seeing some sort of strange canine that could either be quadrupedal or bipedal and we think maybe that short-faced bears cave hyenas dire wolves giant baboons etc 
still might be existing. And when you look in these cave system areas, as stated, these people are missing and we find these strange tracks. That's how I try to approach people right there and just see if they're willing to from there then sit down and talk with me because I never once stated, hey, I'm researching a giant werewolf that transforms on a full moon that, okay. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Because I think- Yeah, like they you shut you it, down right there. Yes, because that's the misconception of it because of the term dog man. But in actuality, there are things like I just stated that are occurring that really need to be looked at. So when I do approach people that are outside of the topic, that's how I try to do that because that's all science right there. Cave systems, yes, science. Uh, missing people, I guess that's not technically science, but that's proven evidence because people are missing. Footprints, that's science. Existing animals, past animals, that's science. So if the scientific community is doing what it should as a scientific community, then that is something that falls in the line with science because we're not just talking now about people's words or people's direct encounters we actually have evidence that is suggesting this right and i mean people are seeing something is misidentification possibility absolutely same thing in any other cryptid world but something's leaving tracks tracks people can't identify so you know you got tracks you got sightings I believe they found hair and stuff right there has been some hair samples for sure and when i was talking to jody the other day i believe almost all of them end up being plant matter and people a lot of times think that plant matter it looks like hair because it does but it's really brittle and a few times i know in one of the infamous cases with linda godfrey it was on monster quest again it ended up coming back cat hair when it was tested from the rooftop so the majority of the hair that I know of directly in some of the more infamous cases has come back as either plant matter or something that we know of. But I do also know that I don't think we have it in direct evidence with us. I think the people that took the picture have it, but we do have something that looks canine-ish hair on what looks to be a bush coming from like a farm area. But the thing is, like I said, that's not as far as I know, in our hands, meaning we can't get that tested. So again, it's only just an image. So it could have just been a local farm dog or their farm dog or a wolf or a coyote, you know, et cetera. Gotcha. Yeah, and that's the other thing is all the pictures. I mean, way before digital enhancement and Photoshop and you know, stuff that was being taken with like an Instamatic camera or camera film. What well, wasn't that one taken down by uh, trying to think it was in Michigan. One of the earlier ones. Uh, it was a prison guard, right? Yeah, and that was fake, too. Yes, exactly. Oh, was it fake? So, yeah, the one you're talking about with the infamous Michigan dog man where it's behind the light pole. And yeah. Yeah, so Ryan Tremblay, which is actually a great individual, he's a.k.a. the Wendigo man or the Wendigo guy, I should say. Him and some others were able to debunk that, and that's actually, it wasn't even from the time frame of that image. It was newer, but it was rendered to look like that. But it's also the howling statue, and when you look at the statue and the posture of that it's literally set up to be behind there so yeah no unfortunately that was again like a big hoax just like the one where it was actually a taxidermied wolf two of them with the skeleton hands coming out claiming that it was a skinwalker running across the field in michigan and then you have another one where people claimed in wisconsin that it was crawling across their backyard but it was cgi and also there's another image where it was from Skyrim where people said the werewolf was coming out. So unfortunately, almost all those super infamous kind of dogman images like that are all staged and hoaxed. I mean, we have some pretty intriguing yeah. ones. Yeah, from like the Jedi National Forest and things like that, that you can see something. But the majority of pictures, man, like that are really all in regards of how someone's looking at the image, dude, through perception, because it really could be sunlight coming in on a log, but somebody thinks they're seeing ears and a nose. Those are hard, man. But when you actually have footprints and 
a pattern where you can see the things walking off and you know we know people are missing here we have cave systems and scratches like this uh, those are a lot easier to actually work with because those are harder to prefabricate man meaning with if you have somebody that specializes in tracking you, they could see if that those were fake tracks whereas if it's just one image somebody could have faked the track more or less but all those type images for the most part i hate to say it but they're almost paradoia i feel like don't you agree kind of i mean even with like sasquatch all the ones that were supposedly not the videos but all these supposed infamous images and such were pretty much like debunked i know i'm not the most experienced but i know that freeman footage is legit and also i think that the other sasquatch one that is pretty dang legit is the one of the supposed skunk ape where it's walking across the swamp where there's alligators and lizards and it legit is moving in a way that a man or a woman in a costume wouldn't be able to trudge through that area those videos are all super legit but then even the one of the skunk ape where it's in the bushes i'm pretty sure that that's either been debunked as an orangutan or not even a living animal oh the mayaka skunk ape is those that the pictures? yes those two pictures yes gotcha i don't know on that one that one throws me because it almost looks like a cutout but you get the eye shine but they're the lips move in it too between the two pictures if you look at them, it, um, Bob Gimlin, I love his YouTube channel, by the way. I hope I can plug that. Sorry. Uh, does a breakdown of it. And he was a he's a primate expert in their reactions and showed where it bared its teeth first in almost a fear. And then it curls okay. its lip back almost in like submission. I believe I know what you're referring to. And I think I did hear some people speaking about saying that that's why they thought it might have been an orangutan but then i heard some other people also stating unfortunately with halloween props or anything like that too whereas it's just two images if it was robotic it's it could have moved its lips yeah. to oh, look absolutely. like that as well so it, that's what's always tough about those things especially with the images because you're only having two images right but at least in those other infamous sasquatch videos you actually have something moving you know and that's I think brings more credence to something. I do have a very, we do got to let you go here pretty soon, but there is an infamous potential. I don't even know what it is. It looks like something strange, jet black, kind of pointy ears. And it came from Mexico where a group of teens were driving through the mountains and they hit it. And they thought they had hit someone's large dog or something at first, or they didn't know. They just, it was all dark black and they get out and the thing runs over kind of on all fours and does a weird crawl and goes behind a tree and starts like shaking the tree and it's upset and you, they're trying to at first see if this animal's okay because they thought they had hit somebody's dog but then it wasn't acting really like it wanted anything to do with them and yeah sure any animal when it's injured is going to act like hey get away from me but it was weird like i said it was on all fours then it goes behind the tree and it's just shaking the tree and yeah, then you're not good. You're not going to get a dog shake a tree. <laughs> yes, exactly. And at that point in time, they they really were kind of like, what the heck? This obviously doesn't seem like it's someone's dog. It looks maybe more like a wild animal. And then it, again, did just kind of crawl back off into the bushes. So that's a pretty solid video on that, too. And then you have the infamous one where it's mixed up. I've heard it came from Canada, but I've also heard it, it came from Michigan where the gentleman's walking his dog and there's that massive jet black looking wolf that is really sleek. It's skin looking and it's got that mane kind of and it stands up and that's terrifying. That's a pretty solid one. But besides that, then you kind of get into the, all right, well, you have that video of the two kids that are frog and lizard hunting which I believe that came from somewhere down in like the LBL area. They're younger kids. Sure, they might not directly be able to have staged this by themselves, but if they had an adult with them, they could have. But it doesn't really seem – it honestly seems like these kids are just out sneaking around, like looking for frogs and stuff like little younger teenager dudes would do. And there's a part behind the tree – where something with pretty white teeth and that are long and shiny eyes looks out, but they're pretty white, pearly kind of teeth. But I don't know, it could have been the way the light picked up on it. So that one's a little interesting. And then I would say the most infamous one is you have the grave digging site in Ohio, in Green Lawn Cemetery, with what looks to be 
like something jet black with the ears digging frantically in the grave. And I'm trying to think. So those are some of the more prevalent ones, and none of those have been debunked or, or such. But the majority of any sort of cryptid type encounter, unfortunately, is usually fraudulent, which is you'd like to not think that, but how many times does it come up where we think something is so legit and then we find out that it's not, you know? So, but I will say tonight, man, I really appreciate you popping by and investing some time out of your busy schedule to sit down and hang out with us all. And I do look forward to watching your channel and what you're doing grow. And I would like to get you back on here at some point in time again and pick your mind some more, my friend. Oh, I'd love to. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for everyone who once again stopped by tonight for another episode of Midnight Lycanthropy here on Star Fox Radio. If you do enjoy my content, please comment, like, subscribe, and share it. Feed the algorithm. And until next time, stay safe out there.